Hey, so hello, and I'm just gonna hop right into this one. This is gonna be kind of uh, an addition to the new segment on the channel where I talk about stuff. Short, clippy videos, but this is gonna be like a quasi-series on passenger train stations around the US. This may be an infrequent series of shorter videos, so don't expect them on regularity. I'd only have like a few of these planned for the next few months, question mark? Stick a pin in that, who knows? But anyways, today we're gonna be talking about Sacramento Valley Station, which has been Sacramento's historic main train station, and still frankly is. This station was built in 1926 to give the city a station befitting the capital city of one of the great states of the U.S. Before the station was built, Sacramento was served by a wooden building north of the current rail yards that are undergoing redevelopment. And I actually managed to find a picture, historic picture, or map of the area. So the rail yards is the all the way on the left hand side near this lake. That's the existing rail yards that are being redeveloped and on the northern edge of that was the um, actual old station which was the um, known as the arcade station. The station was built by the Central Pacific and the SP honestly had no intention of making a better station even as the politicians better clamored for a better station to serve California's state capital. So this situation more or less continued until 1908, 1910, somewhere in that time frame until a terrible thing happened, which was the Western Pacific coming to town, which ended the Southern Pacific's monopoly on transportation to the state capital. And they built their own station at J and 19th Streets, about two miles or so east of the SP station. This is what finally pushed the SP to get serious about building a new station, since it didn't want to be outshined by a much newer and much smaller competitor in its own backyard. The current side of the station at I Street was a pond or lake I'm not really sure what the dividing line on that is, but anyways, it was a body of water and the pond was called China Slough because it was just north of Chinatown and the railroad basically just used it as a place to dump all the garbage from the rail yards on the other side of the pond. And in 1908, the SP started half-heartedly working on cleaning up the lake, mostly by dredging sand out of a nearby river and starting to fill it in and just drain it away. The pond was about 40 feet deep, which required two years of work and the arrival of the Western Pacific before the um, SP got serious about doing anything about the site and using it for anything, which was going to be a future station. The site was chosen because it was closer to the city's business district, important state buildings, and Chinatown. Just kidding, Chinatown wasn't important, but that's a story for a different channel. I think at this point they basically slum clearanced it, and I think... Honestly, I think Sacramento's Chinatown now is like literally just three blocks and a holiday in. History, segregation, fun stuff. Well, not the focus of this channel though. So 1908, 1910. So 19, I think 1910 is like the more or less time when it was fully filled in and work can begin. And by 1917, took them seven whole years. I don't even think World War One was like the disruption to this. It just they were just not serious about building a new station, despite being embarrassed by the station I showed earlier. And it took until then to get the agreements, and it took nine years after that to get the station completed. So even in the face of competition, the SP still wasn't serious about building a grand new station. And I know now it normally takes this long to build things because grants for public money are a very long and slow process, but the SP didn't have that problem. Not to mention it frankly had bought off most, if not all, the politicians by this point, so... So the most striking feature of this train station is its red brick facade that covers the entirety of the building and the terracotta roof. The structure of the building, for reference, is actually reinforced concrete, so it's basically just a box with a brick facade over it. So the brick is just cladding, it's not actually structural, because even I think by then they figured out that, yeah, earthquakes and bricks are not a good idea. <laughs> The main waiting area is 40 feet tall, and um, I'm actually just going to show a rendering of one for, that came from when they were um, renovating it in uh, the last couple years. And the um, the waiting area, as I said, is the 40 foot tall amber windows as shown in this render, and it filters the color of the light as it comes in because the well, at least one side of the building actually gets like direct sunlight. And the station has marble floors, mahogany benches, a handful of chandeliers, and is painted in like kind of light earthy. So it was painted in light earthy colors. The other main feature is a mural painted by John A. Macquarie, commemorating the opening of the Transcontinental Railroad. And this was a WPA painting done during the Depression. 
the station has two wings to the side of the waiting room and an addition off the back that was done sometime in the 60s. The wings held offices for the railroad prior to the mid-2000s when the railroad was bought by the city of Sacramento and an extensive remodeling was started. Prior to that, I do believe the, at least prior to the 60s and the addition, the eastern wing is where the ticket offices were and the western wing was used for just the railroad in general to have like their regional or division offices in. The remodeling commenced in 2006 when the city bought the station from the Union Pacific. The station had since 1971 and the beginning of Amtrak gone from a station that had only seen a few trains per day to nearly 40 and is now the seventh busy station in the entire of the T of the Amtrak system. Among the first projects the city undertook was fixing the roof, building a new bus terminal, and working with SACRT, which is the local transit operator, to extend the gold line to the station, and other minor projects that more or less started patching some of the deferred maintenance that was basically ignored over the last intervening 35 or so years. The city also divided used a three-part plan to fully restore the station to its former glory. The first part involved moving the track some 500 feet northeast to straighten out a curve and move the platform to a better location, at least vis-a-vis -vis the tracks, and away from the existing station. Part two was to complete an overhaul of the station, which included for the foundation work to make sure it was more earthquake resistant, moving the ticket and crew space to the western wing of the station where the old train offices used to be, and renewing the facade, along with replacing all the mechanical systems, so HVAC and such, and just otherwise completing any of the damage, or fixing the damage that the deferred maintenance had wrought on the station. And one of the other main things was is that they also did touch up and restore a lot of the paint in the station, as shown in the picture. They were restoring the um, WPA painting mural, rather, that was put in in the 1930s. And then the final part of the, of the plan is to create a master plan for the surrounding neighborhood as part of the rail yards redevelopment project, which eventually includes building a new station closer to the platforms and or possibly uh, moving the existing station. I think they've mostly gone to assuming they'll just build a new facility and then eventually converting the station to being kind of like the ferry plaza in San Francisco but without the use of it being a, like an active train station. And, and I do believe that like even as a bus terminal like the new station will get all the like transit stuff and some commercial whereas the old station will be entirely commercial. But anyways, before I uh, ramble on too long, this kind of concludes the I Street Depot and its life and showing that it has lived many lives in its existence. It was only it was only conceived and very slowly that that to give Sacramento a station befitting of a capital city only after the Western Pacific showed them up, the SP that is, and it lived a long life as a central station to go into decline and eventually be transferred to Amtrak, and now it is finally returning to its former glory as a major transportation center for the city of Sacramento. And that is where I'm going to leave it, and as I mentioned at the beginning, this might be a one-off, this might be a short series. I have a few that I'm currently looking into doing, but again, hope you enjoyed and hope you do come back for the next, and uh, yeah, do the YouTube thing.